tray full of ices. Hello, and welcome back to Behind the Songs with Intense Reality. So we're here to talk about Lead You Astray. Um, it comes after interlude on the album, so hopefully if you've ever sat down and, and done an album listen, you'll hear kind of the way that we set up interlude to like flow into the beginning of this song, and then boom, we're like right back at it again. Uh, Lead You Astray was another one of the ones that I kind of wrote um, hoping that the band would like it and, and that it could be like a proper intense reality song and then it would kind of catch on, it would kind of fit in with the other stuff we were working on at the time. I wrote this, I believe it was around December 2020, like it was towards the end of the year. Um, the social context is kind of important, like we were living at a point where there were still pretty heavy um, like gathering restrictions and stuff like that. That's when a lot of this album was kind of written. So. Um, that informed the, like the lyrics for a couple of the songs, although not in like preachy or, or like politicized ways or anything like that, but rather just like, you know, um, I was just writing about a lot of the things that I was like feeling and experiencing at the time. And this song to me overall turned out to be about just kind of that, um, that seeking of connectivity, even during a time where that was like discouraged. And then almost kind of like a little bit of a guilt that arose from like taking care of your own uh, mental health needs by seeing other people even though um, for a while just for a little while it seemed like it was like well that's kind of like a, a breach of a, a restriction or whatever right so it was kind of living at that time and trying to like come to terms with that um, was kind of what that song most ended up being about and it's kind of like alluding to like a couple people meeting even though they you know maybe they they probably shouldn't um, but the, the narrator's just talk, kind of talking about how, well, I'm like breaking the rules in my own self-defense here, like this is kind of what I, this is kind of what I need for myself at this time. And we were all feeling it at the point, it was a really rough and kind of difficult time, so that of course, you know, we're writing about things that happen in the real world, it was only a matter of time before something like that would kind of make its way into one of the songs. And um, But musically, like it just, it, it kind of, it packs a punch, it like kind of follows some similar dimensions from some other intense reality songs, but nonetheless, like, um, has been really fun to play live and, and kind of get out and show off. I mean, the only other thing I really want to touch on is kind of like more minor key versus major key chorus, which is just like one of my favorite things ever. Like a little bit more of like kind of like a anthemic, like uplifting chorus and then like hits a little bit harder in the verses. Kind of do some cool rhythm things on the drums and stuff. I like how it turned out. I'm, I'm happy about it. It's a fun one. It's definitely a banger for sure. Yeah, I like this song too. I, like, I, I changed a couple of little guitar parts, but very minor. Everything's pretty much exactly as you wrote it. So that was cool. You know, it's, it's cool to just have somebody come in and be like, here, I wrote a song. Let's, let's learn this. And you're like, damn, this is an original, cool idea. Like, it fits right in. I think it's a good song. I, I enjoy playing it. With a transition coming in from interlude and whatnot live for sure is uh, I could see that being quite the hell of an opener for sure. Oh, it would be cool to to start off a gig like low like key with like interlude and then yeah. and then boom yeah. we're in have that build up and then all of a sudden. I hadn't thought to actually do that yet, but that could be that definitely could be a thing to do. Because yeah, we we played them together yeah. at our um, album release show at Leah's Bar and Grill on November eighteenth, like the day the album came out, and that was that was really fun to see. I kind of playing them together live, so uh, yeah, we played this one uh, live a few times before that though too, and it, it seemed to go down pretty well. Um, so we'll probably be continuing to to rock this one. Yeah, just one of those ones that that kind of came together pretty quickly. I find if I'm writing material, like it does kind of need to come to uh, come together pretty quickly, or else sometimes me finishing the lyrics of something can drag on for like a very long time. So sometimes I have to train myself to follow through with like 90% of a song idea at the moment that I feel inspired about it. Because if I try to leave it and come back to it, I find it difficult to kind of get back into the headspace. So I felt kind of lucky that this song um, was written kind of in all one focus to go. Like I remember just being alone in the rehearsal space by myself one night and, and just coming up with most of it there. Just totally alone, totally focused, disconnected from everything else, just there to write the song. Honestly, I like that the best. <laughs> Cause you're like most focused and you're just like and get it done. I have so many songs that I start and I don't finish. Well, we'll hopefully be finishing a lot more in the future and uh, we'll hopefully be gigging this one out a little bit. So follow us on here if you want to see the rest of the Behind the Songs videos and catch us at a gig and you'll probably see us play this one live. Hopefully you guys are digging these. There's a playlist with all the videos and uh, tune in next week when we're going to talk about the trade-off. 
And otherwise, have a great rest of your week.